Uh, hello, dear Open Doors participants. Uh, we are glad you joined the Open Doors uh, Olympiad webinar with the representatives of the university's organizers. Uh, and uh, uh, my name uh, is uh, Anna Rejova. I'm a project manager of Open Doors uh, Graduate Scholarship Project. And uh, we will have today uh, the speakers from the National Research University High Schools, uh, High School of Economics uh, and the National Research Nuclear University, MIFI. Uh, both universities are located in Moscow, the capital city of Russia. Uh, and first, uh, let me share uh, some um, housekeeping details about today's webinar. Uh, during the session and presentations, uh, you will be able to write your questions in the Q&A section. Um, and uh, it would be perfect if you write uh, uh, the uh, name of the university to which you address your question. So we will be more efficient uh, when, we, um, when we answer the questions you ask. Um, please note that today we will preferably answer the questions of the, um, which will be addressed to the universities um, and all the organizational uh, issues about the stages of the Olympiad, uh, and other questions uh, could be addressed, but some of them could be dismissed uh, and uh, they could be asked directly to us by email or through the feedback form. So um, at the end of the webinar, we will come back to the questions. We will also answer some, uh, some of them in writing during the sessions. And uh, first, let me start uh, with the general information uh, on the Olympiad and quick overview of the registration uh, and the following stages. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the seventh year of Open Doors, uh, which is organized by the Global Universities As Association uh, with the support of the Ministry of Higher Education uh, and Science of the Russian Federation. Uh, last year, about 80,000 participants from more than 190 countries submitted their portfolios to join the competition uh, to win the full tuition scholarship for studies in the master or PhD program in one of the leading Russian universities. You can participate in Russian uh, or in English. Uh, please note that uh, no uh, English or Russian official language test is required and all the stages are organized online. As Olympiad winner, uh, you can choose to study at any Russian university at the master's level and uh, at one of the university's organizers, the names of them you, you see on the screen, uh, if you decide to study at the uh, doctoral level. Um, uh, there is an advantage also to apply uh, to one of the university's organizers at uh, the master's level at S. Uh, they have a number of programs which guarantee your admission as a winner or a prize winner of the Olympiad. In Russia, you can study uh, in Russian or in, in English, depending on the program's availability in English language. Uh, the foundation year when you study Russian is also available and is covered by the scholarship you get as a winner. Um, there are 14 uh, subjects in the Olympiad and you can, uh, you can choose uh, to participate in one or a number of the subjects. Uh, we encourage you to familiarize with the programs of the subject and uh, uh, make your choice carefully, uh, as even if you win in a couple of subjects, you will be able uh, to, uh, to apply for the scholarship in just one subject. Uh, right now, we have the portfolio submission stage. Uh, you can um, you can proceed uh, with the preparation of the motivation letter, uh, uploading um, all uh, the achievement additional achievements documents, your, edu your educational documents, and um, uh, also attempt uh, the trial test. Uh, the entrance test, uh, th there are three attempts, and uh, if you have one attempt which is successful, it is enough for you to proceed uh, to, to, the, uh, to the following st stage if your portfolio is estimated to the, uh, to the score, which is high enough for you uh, to be admitted uh, to, the, um, to the second stage of the Olympiad. Uh, we are going to launch the portfolio submission button soon. 
So I know there are a lot of questions from our participants right now when it's become uh, when it's becoming available. So it will be launching really soon. So maybe today or tomorrow. Um, those who already uh, completed the portfolios and uh, uh, had the successful attempts with the entrance test, completed motivation letter, they would be able to submit their portfolio. This option will be available until December 10, but if you submit your portfolio, you will be able to withdraw it only, um, only till uh, 30th of November. Please keep in mind. Um, the Olympia trials, uh, the exam sessions uh, will be organized uh, from January 9 uh, till January 17. Uh, the schedule of the exams uh, is already available on the Olympiad website, and the list of the second stage participants will be available on the website as well on December 22nd. And if you are um, admitted to the second stage, you will get this notification in your um, participant account on the Olympiad website. Uh, please note that in the schedule, we have some days with the uh, couple of exams scheduled. And if you registered in a couple of subjects uh, which have like the same exam date, uh, keep it in mind and allow uh, to have enough time uh, to proceed with the second stage exams on the same day. Uh, the winners... Um, uh, those who are participating uh, in the third stage, uh, if you registered for a doctoral track to pursue a PhD, uh, the list of prospective supervisors will become available uh, approximately in the middle of November. Uh, the rounds of the interviews with the prospective research supervisors and managers of the doctoral track uh, will take place at the end of February and middle of March. The winners of the master's track are announced on February 9, uh, and we'll have a, and uh, you will have a couple of weeks uh, to upload the documents for a scholarship in the participant account. The doctoral tracks winners are announced on, on March 13, and uh, they should submit the documents directly uh, to the universities uh, where the scientific supervision is confirmed as a, uh, as a result of the interviews rounds. The instructions will be provided to you. And uh, if you still have questions about that, you will be able to contact us uh, by the feedback form or email. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, useful information uh, in different uh, sections of the Olympiad website. You can familiarize uh, yourself with the Olympiad rules uh, and uh, read the Olympiad review, which uh, answers a lot of questions which can arise uh, when you are preparing to the uh, different stages of the Olympiad. Uh, there is a section of frequently asked questions. It's very, it, it, I also advise you to go through it and uh, uh, understand uh, the uh, logic of the Olympiad and uh, you will be also able to get a lot of answers, uh, I'm sure, uh, to, to the questions you may have. Uh, please join our groups of contact and Telegram channel. Um, we publish their information on the important uh, stages of the Olympiad and uh, share all the important news there. Um, and also you will be able to get uh, useful and interesting information and facts about the university's organizers, uh, about the process uh, of um, um, applying for the scholarship and also uh, interesting facts about uh, the life and uh, the studies in Russia of those winners of the Olympiad who already uh, study and uh, got the scholarship for studies in Russia. If you don't find the information you are interested in or have any specific question, you're welcome to contact us uh, through the feedback form or by email. Uh, uh, please, when you uh, when you ask us about something, use just one source of communication for us to address them as quick as possible. So thank you very much. I am uh, done with my part. Uh, and now uh, I would like to invite 
the representative of the uh, High School of Economics to share uh, the information on the university and the available programs for the Olympiad winners and prize winners. Okay, thank you very much, Anna. <laughs> I'm happy to meet you all, guys. Good morning. Well, it's a morning my time. I don't know how it's for you. Uh, so uh, before I jump into presentation, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Inam. And as Anna mentioned, I represent today HEC University. And to be specific, I work for the Education and Training Advisory Center. So we help prospective students to get admission to HEC University. OK, so I let me share my presentation. Uh, presentation. Uh, be, Anna mentioned before that uh, both HEC University and MIFI University are located in Moscow. Well, I have to say that HEC University is slightly more than Moscow, more than that. We have, well, as we say, we have five campuses. So four of them are located in different Russian cities. And uh, since recently, we also have an online campus. I'm not going to tell you a lot about online campus. Uh, obviously, it provides a wide range of um, online educational services, such as different courses and even degree programs. But most of them are paid programs, and this is not something what we are here for today. We all want to have scholarship and get free admission to university, I guess. Okay, so speaking of the other four campuses, one is located in Moscow. Uh, the other one is located in St. Petersburg. I'm sure you heard about this city as well. They call it a second capital of Russia. Then there is yet another campus in the city called Nizhny Novgorod. It's pretty much close to Moscow as well. Actually, it's even closer than St. Petersburg, just four hours by high-speed train. And there is yet another campus in the city of Perm. I'm not sure you heard about that one, but uh, it's located close to the Ural Mountains in case it tells you something. Okay, so um, uh, just in, uh, I would like to mention that um, each campus has their own programs. So I will talk a little bit more about it later, uh, but just to mention now that when you apply for an educational program in HSC University, you also need to pay attention to the location. So you choose a program and the location. Okay, so here's this uh, the slide with some numbers, with some statistics related to HSC University. But before we go into this, I would like to pay you attention to this pretty and uh, pretty and wise crow, which is an official mascot of the um, HEC University. It's been official mascot since nearly the date of its foundation. And I have to say that HEC University is a young university. It's even younger than myself. It's just about 30 years old. Uh, and even though it's a young university, it's uh, already very large. Well, in terms of facilities, as you could already see, we have uh, four uh, offline campuses and one online. But also in terms of number of the, uni of the students who study at HEC University. So according to the latest data, uh, we have nearly 52,000 students studying at HEC, including 5,500 of international students. I have to say that international standing is really, well, truly remarkable at HEC, uh, which is proved by the international uh, most reputable rankings, such as um, the World University ranking, the one which is um, uh, the supplement of the British Times and QS World University rankings. As you can see that uh, we are taking number 64 uh, out of 500, as far as I remember, uh, in the young university rankings, according to the latest data. Uh, so I suggest that we move to and speak a little bit more about the programs, about the majors that we offer at HEC. They are all, we all, we offer all in-demand majors such as economic science, um, design, computer science, journalism, business and economics, foreign languages, political science, I will not mention them all. Uh, 
if we speak a little bit more specific, we have uh, more than 180 graduate programs, of which 35 are English taught, and we have 38 PhD programs. Nearly all of them are English taught as well. Now, I would like to show you something, show you to introduce you to our website, which is admissionshsc.ru. Uh, so, um, hold on a second. Mm, so, if you go to this website, admissions.hsc.ru, uh, and go to... Um, the, go to apply for graduate programs, you can go to Olympiads and here you click to open doors. Don't worry if you don't remember the, the navigation through the website now. You can always contact us. I will give you the contact details and you can contact us and we'll give you all the necessary links. I'm just giving you the general idea now. So if you go to the Open Doors Olympiads page, you will see the exact programs that you may apply for. Now, it's something very important for you to understand that when participating in the Olympiad, you choose a subject, for example, economics and economic, economic, econometrics, computer and data science. And uh, each uh, the programs that you may apply for at HEC are listed here. You cannot apply for any program that you wish to they should correlate with the subject, okay? So again, if you apply for computer and data science, here are the programs that you may apply for. And pay your attention that in braces, you see the name of the location. So the name of the campus where the program is located. We earlier a little bit spoke about it, okay? So these are the graduate programs. And if you scroll down, you will see the uh, the PhD program that you can apply for. Okay, so I'm getting back to the presentation. We spoke about the programs. Yes, uh, just as Anna already mentioned, I would like to pay your attention to this again. When you choose a program, don't you worry about the language of instruction. In case you like some particular educational program, but you see that it's taught in Russian, you may always apply for a foundation or as we call it preparatory course, which is one year Russian language course. And when you apply, just as Anna mentioned, it's covered by the scholarship as well. So uh, in case you decide to study at a Russian taught program, you will basically apply, apply for a package. So a prep year plus a degree program, okay? Uh, then I would like to dedicate like literally a couple of minutes to science at HEC. I mean, science and science uh, and research opportunities at HEC, something that I can't skip because this is something what HEC is famous for. Uh, well, uh, HEC, uh, we are the, as a think tank, I would say the think tank we cooperate with, uh, largely cooperate with corporate and public uh, sector. We organize um, many internationally international recognized events uh, on the base of university um we there are totally 80 scientific institutes and international laboratories incorporated in the academic infrastructure of the university we are also truly proud of the faculty members uh, our faculty members who include more than 700 doctors of science and more than 1,800 candidates of science. So for those you guys who have academic ambitions, HEC University truly offers brilliant opportunities to professional self-realization. Okay, then uh, we are, for now we are done with the academic side of HEC University, and I would like to introduce you to something else like extracurricular things, uh, which are very important as well. And this is something that HEC University is rightly proud of. So, as I mentioned earlier, we are the young university, which we consider as our competitive advantage. Well, first of all, academically wise, we were initially tailored to modern and international educational standards. But also, 
Uh, being young means that all our facilities and amenities are young and modern and very nice to be at. You can see the photos uh, yourself. Uh, this is Moscow campus, but it's the same all across for across all the four campuses. If you don't believe me, you can Google yourself. So obviously all the buildings have Wi-Fi access, free Wi-Fi access. The territory is well secured and they, each building has friendly guards. Uh, some of them even speak a little bit of English. So um, speaking about the courses, set lunch will cost you at the student's cafeteria will cost you about 180 rubles, uh, which is about two US, USD dollars. And a cup of coffee is about 120 rubles, okay? So we have many pretty girls working over here. Uh, so, yeah, speaking about the dormitories, uh, all scholarship students are provided with a place in a dormitory. Uh, all dormitories are very close to metro stations, so the transport accessibility is very good. Uh, you, as a scholarship student, uh, you will have to pay a very small amount of money on a monthly basis, which is about 20 US dollars per month. Okay, uh, then, uh, well, I already mentioned that uh, the transportation, the public transport is amazing in Moscow, not only in Moscow, actually in all cities, and it's also very cheap. Uh, as a scholarship student, you will also be provided with a social student's card, which will allow you to use public transport at a very, very low cost. For example, you will have to pay only about five USD dollars per month for Metro. Okay, then, well, here is the slide just uh, for your convenience. It shows uh, approximately your monthly costs as a student living here in Russia. Well, in Moscow, it might be a little, little, little bit more expensive, but this is an average um, consumer basket, okay, let's put it this way. So just to wrap up uh, about um, the scholarship, what it gives you, what the possibilities it provides you with. So the scholarship, uh, based on my experience, I would like to pay this extra attention to this because some students think that scholarship covers everything, including food and travel from your home country to Russia. Uh, what is covered by scholarship? First of all, uh, you have a free education. So you have a fully, uh, how do you say it? I forgot. Uh, so it's like a, a full scholarship. So you don't have to pay for, for your education. This is number one and the most important thing. Secondly, you will be provided with a place in a, one of the students' dormitories. Uh, then number three, uh, you will be paid a monthly stipend at the amount of 2,000 rubles, which is approximately $20 on monthly basis. And also, as mentioned, number four, you will be given a social student's card, which allows you to use public transport at a very low, uh, at a very low cost. And also, it gives you 50% discount uh, if you wish to go to some of the museums or art galleries, and they are Truly amazing here. I'm sure at least you heard about Hermitage in St. Petersburg and Tretikov Gallery here in Moscow. Okay, so I wanted to also mention a little bit about the services that we have um, available for HEC students. Well, obviously we do have lots of sports and student-led clubs in HEC. Uh, there are more than 180 sports and societies at HEC. We do have a very friendly international environment. Uh, we have a lot of international students. As I mentioned in the beginning, it, there are more than 5,500 stu international students studying at HEC now. And there is something interesting that HEC offers. I'm talking about HEC bodies who help international students to get accustomed to life in Moscow and on campus. And this service is provided by International Student Support Office. Uh, which is not us, it's a separate division. Uh, so if you become an HEC student, this will be your reference, okay? So here is the uh, link to the uh, web page if you decide to learn more about them. And uh, apart from HEC bodies, there are 
two more, well, they offer different services, but I would like to mention two more, such as Center for Psychological Counseling that provides up to three free individual consultations, and also HEC uh, Career Center that helps students to find a job or an internship. Uh, I would like to say that starting from uh, 9, 2020, foreign students don't need to obtain a work permit, which is a good news for you in case you decide to find a job here with the help of the HEC Career Center. Uh, you keep in mind that you may work up to 40 hours per week. Okay, then there is something else I think I wanted to say. Well, here are our contact details. Again, we are Education and Training Advisory Center. Uh, so as I mentioned in the beginning, we help uh, we help you out with uh, the admission process. And uh, I would like to also mention about the process of application to HEC. Um, I would like to say that there are two different things like the Olympiad and admission to HEC. If you become a prize winner of the uh, Open Doors Olympiad, this is very good, well done, but this is not yet the whole thing. What do, If you become a winner of the Olympiad, you need to contact us and inform us about this, okay? So you need to be proactive. You can contact us via email or via Messenger such as WhatsApp or Telegram say, hello, I'm so-and-so, here is my diploma, I would like to study at HEC. It's if you want to get a full uh, scholarship, like 100% scholarship, it's important that you do it before April the 1st next year, okay? Uh, so you you contact us and you tell us, you inform us about the programs that you want to apply for. If you have any difficulties with understanding uh, the website and I mean the navigation through the website and choosing the program, you let us know. So you, we hope we help you out with all your possible questions. Just wanted to emphasize that please don't think that winning the Olympiad means automatic admission to HEC. These are connected but still different things. Uh, winning the Olympiad allows you to get admission to a scholarship without passing uh, through the HEC selection process, okay, without passing exams. Okay, so this is probably it. Uh, I'm happy to finish and pass the word to my colleagues from MIFI. Okay, thank you very much. So you can now sh stop sharing the screen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we invite Alexander to uh, share the presentation about uh, MIFI University uh, and the programs available for studies for the winners and prize winners of the Olympiad. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, just a second, I'm trying to share the screen. Okay, I hope everyone can see uh, the presentation. Yes. And uh, yes, let me start uh, with uh, a short introduction about uh, myself. My name is Alexander Kromf and I work at the National Research Nuclear University, MFE. Actually, I hold the position of uh, Associate Professor of Nuclear Physics, as well as uh, Deputy Director of Institute of Nuclear Physics, specifically on international relations. Uh, that's why I'm representing uh, the short overview, overview of our university and some scientific educational programs uh, to you. So let me start with uh, a very short uh, history of our university. Uh, the university uh, was established in 1942, mostly with uh, the goal to prepare uh, highly qualified staff for the uh, Soviet atomic project. That's uh, a response to the American Manhattan project to uh, construct an atomic, uh, an atomic bomb. And uh, finally, it uh, gave rise to the uh, peaceful use of uh, nuclear energy. And we take pride in the fact that six Nobel uh, Prize winners, you can see them on the slide, 
uh, can see considerably contributed uh, to the creation of our university. And talking about uh, the infrastructure, actually, we're also a network university, and uh, our university consists of 16 uh, branches, including two uh, abroad in uh, the former Soviet republics in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. And uh, actually, uh, all international students study only uh, on two campuses. The main campus, which is located uh, in Moscow, and the second one, it's a little bit uh, not so big like in Moscow, it's located in Obninsk, which is about 100 uh, kilometers from, uh, from Moscow. And in total, uh, uh, we have about uh, 6,000 students who study in Moscow and overall 20,000, including all campuses. And uh, international students in Moscow and Obninsk comprise about 26% uh, of all uh, students. That is what a significant amount, I think. Uh, the staff number is about uh, 1,030 uh, 1, uh, professor who teach courses in our university. Talking about globalization, we have students from roughly uh, eight, 80 countries. Uh, you can see the geography here. And uh, Mefei is a recognized leader and uh, has an expertise mostly in uh, technical areas. First of all, of course, uh, nuclear research and uh, nuclear physics, high energy physics, laser and plasma physics, nanoelectronics, and of course, uh, information technologies. In total, we offer about uh, 60 uh, majors for master, bachelor, and PhD degrees. And uh, some of them you can see uh, here on the slide. Um, talking about uh, rankings, we sit pretty comfortably in uh, Russian rankings. We uh, hold a position uh, number two or four if we talk about uh, Russian rankings, and if we talk about international rankings, uh, uh, by subject specifically, physics, uh, astronomy, natural sciences, material sciences, in, in some of this area, we are in top 100 in the world. So uh, a little bit about uh, the structure of uh, our university. Uh, we have uh, five uh, divisions. And they used to be faculties, but now we call them uh, institutes. And I work at the Institute of Nuclear Physics uh, and Engineering, which specializes mostly in uh, atomic power industry and um, all areas related uh, to nuclear physics. Institute for Laser and Plasma Technologies offers programs in uh, laser physics, uh, beam physics, and uh, everything which is related to uh, plasma. Uh, the third institute is uh, FISBIO, which is specializes in uh, nuclear, mostly nuclear medicine and some innovative ways to uh, treat uh, different diseases. Uh, the next one is Institute of Non-Engineering and Electronics, mostly uh, as you can uh, deduce from the, the name of institute that's about electronics and some uh, new technologies, including uh, quantum uh, information technology and development of new heterostructure. And uh, uh, the last one is Institute, which is, uh, specializes in uh, cybersecurity and information uh, technology, which is one of the biggest um, branches and divisions in our university. Here you can see the number of uh, staff members and number of students approximately, which study in uh, all institutes. So uh, talking about educational programs, uh, uh, we also offer programs in English language and of course in uh, Russian language. Here you can see uh, some programs, mostly of them uh, devoted to physics, uh, specifically uh, nuclear physics and fusion physics. Uh, here on the right side of, of the slide, are PhD programs, which are taught in Russians. And here we can see uh, educational programs, which are taught in 
uh, Russian. You can choose between what language do you like to uh, study. But of course, the number of uh, programs uh, which we can offer in Russian uh, is uh, bigger. So the choice is more broad compared to English to programs. So as I work at the Institute of Nuclear Physics and Engineering, and uh, I want to give some uh, more information about uh, nuclear physics, which are which is uh, the best part of our university, I think. Uh, first of all, uh, our uh, institute, Institute of Nuclear Physics and Engineering, consists of uh, three uh, centers, and else uh, each center uh, specializes in uh, some area of research. The first one is fundamental research in particle physics. Uh, the second one is nuclear systems and material, and the third one is devoted to uh, atomic energy and uh, peaceful use of uh, nuclear power. Uh, so here uh, are uh, programs which are taught in English, master degree programs. Here we can see the names of the majors, the names of the programs, and uh, campus where is it's taught. So uh, a little bit more information about uh, nuclear engineering and nuclear power engineering programs, which are taught uh, on Moscow campus. And these programs are, uh, are preparing uh, our students to work in the atomic industry, uh, mostly uh, in, air, in the areas which are related to analysis, design, and construction of uh, contemporary and advanced uh, nuclear power facilities, which can start uh, their uh, their, uh, their way of uh, implementing all power of nuclear energy in the future. Uh, this program is uh, uh, independently uh, accredited by uh, specialists from the atomic industry and uh, by the European Associ Association of Engineering Professionals. So some courses, mostly of course, them are related to nuclear physics. Here we can see them. Let, let's move. Further. Uh, the areas of interest are uh, research on uh, transfer of radiation, research on uh, neutron physical processes which happen in the nuclear reactor core, and technologies related to so called closed nuclear fuel, fuel uh, cycle, which uh, one of the most innovative ways to utilize uh, the power of the nuclear energy. We have uh, quite significant infrastructure on the campus, including the research reactor and uh, uh, nuclear power simulators, which can simulate the work at the real uh, nuclear facility and a lot of other equipment. Uh, the second uh, part of our education in nuclear physics is related to uh, material science. And in material science, we have two programs, uh, materials for nuclear applications and material design and engineering. This program is intended uh, specifically to prepare uh, professionals who are going to work uh, not only in the nuclear industry, but in other areas where uh, properties of materials play a key uh, role. For example, in aviation industry, in uh, car industry, there are uh, new challenges require new properties for materials. And here in MEFI, we uh, give a lot of information about properties of materials, not only from the nuclear physics point of view, but uh, other uh, areas, including uh, semiconductor technologies, physics of uh, solid materials, and so on. And all knowledge can be applied uh, in different uh, areas. Here, the main areas of scientific interest of our uh, staff members, of course, nuclear fuel, uh, construction of uh, new materials and test of this material using sophisticated methods, including X-ray structural and phase analysis of material. And of course, some uh, theoretical aspects of this whole uh, research. Uh, and the last a uh, program which I like to, would like to advertise is called High Energy Physics and Astrophysics. And this uh, program is devoted to uh, uh, fundamental aspects of nuclear physics, specifically uh, physics of uh, 
new phenomena you can uh, get knowledge in uh, nuclear physics and particle physics physics of accelerators physics of um, new technologies how to detect uh, radiation and uh, this uh, cross cover different topics topics including theoretical uh, and experimental feats of uh, particle physics and here are a list of experiments uh, where our staff member participates participate we have about uh, 30 uh, international collaborates collaborations we participate in more than 30 international collaborate collaborations in different uh, fields in neutrino physics and high energy physics uh, even dark matter search and the areas of interest are as uh, theoretical aspects including simulation and data analysis as well as uh, practical fields like development of new uh, facilities here are the list of experiments of course experiments in uh, uh, Switzerland and large hadron collider and CERN experiments in uh other international uh, location but uh from this uh, from the last year uh we pay more attention to uh national facilities like for example super collider nika which is under construction and in joint institute for nuclear research in dubna which is uh very close to moscow and all our students all uh have, have uh, an opportunity to participate in this amazing uh, experiments. Also, we have uh, some facilities which are located right on the campus. For example, experimental facility, facility in Navid, uh, which is focused on uh, studying properties of uh, cosmic rays. So uh, here you can see our uh, major part part partners, industrial par uh, partners, uh, the first one, of course, is uh, the Rosatom State Corporation, uh, which is a global partner and supports all our activity in the fields of nuclear uh, physics and technology. And other uh, famous Russia's, Russian enterprises, including uh, banks, finance uh, companies, laser companies, and high technological companies like uh, Rostec, Rostana, and so on. Uh, of course, we keep in touch with international organizations, strong, tie, strong ties with International Atomic Energy Agency, which is located in, in Vienna, and Nuclear Energy, Energy uh, Agency uh, in Paris. And as well, uh, we have uh, strong collaboration with CERN and Russian uh, scientific centers like Kurchatov Institute and Russian uh, Academy of Sciences, and of course, Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, which I have mentioned already. So uh, the main feature of uh, preparing our students specifically in the field of nuclear technologies is giving them an opportunity to uh, touch real uh, facilities. We organize for all of them uh, a hands-on experience, which is uh, a practice, which is located in uh, our so-called uh, resource centers, which are located close to Rosatom nuclear facilities like uh, nuclear power plants or uh, uh, nuclear reprocessing plants, for example, or nuclear reactors, and which you can see uh, the names of these, uh, the places we have we have these uh, centers and uh, uh, every year more than 200 international students have this practical experiment experience in these uh, facilities. So also I would like to uh, show you some school schools and conferences which are organized specifically for uh, all students, not only in math, but all our collaborators all around the world, uh, schools on uh, nuclear physics, high energy physics, on nuclear materials. Uh, you can see the names of these schools here. Uh, and the last slide, which I can, uh, which I would like to show you, you can see our uh, websites. Uh, you can find all information about 
all educational programs, uh, conditions uh, in the dorm. We have uh, the dorm, which is located about uh, 15 minutes walk from the uh, Mephi Moscow main campus, which is pretty comfortable, newly built, and you can find all the information here or can contact our admission officers by mailing to this uh, address. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, they were a lot of uh, very useful information for the uh, Open Doors participants. So uh, we are getting a lot of questions uh, from the participants today. Some of them are uh, more like some of them address the organizational issues of the Olympiad. I will cover some of them during the Q&A uh, session we are going to have right now. So let me uh, okay. Let me start going through the sections with the questions and answers. Sorry. Um, yeah, um, we will try to cover most of them. Uh, and uh, so the first question is, uh, is there any age limit for admission to a master's degree? <laughs> so can you comment on that? Do you have like any age limitations or like I would put this question in another way. So is there, a gap available in between uh, the uh, bachelor degree st uh, studies and the master's studies. So if uh, if the students um, have this gap, could it influence on their admission to the university? Not in the case with HAC. Okay. Well, if, yeah, if you apply for say a graduate program, uh, you, um, well, first of all, you will uh, submit your uh, Olympiad diploma, a winner, prize winner. And then, um, well, in this case, really, they, the gap is not important. I was just thinking that if, for example, you don't have a prize winner diploma, but just a winner diploma, you can still apply for, to HAC. Uh, but in this case, it's most likely that you won't be offered a full scholarship, but you will be offered a very good discount up to 70%. Okay. And additionally, in this case, you will have to submit your portfolio so that the study office of the educational program could view it and estimate. And such portfolios, they are prepared according to a certain requirements. Each program has their own requirements. And in all of the cases, the cap between your bachelor degree and the point where you are now is not important. Normally, what is important is to submit a a recommendation letter from your previous academic supervisor, for example, or from your job, uh, um, yeah, from your job, or uh, for you may also submit, uh, well, your bachelor degree diploma with uh, the transcript. What else? Uh, uh, your motivation letter. So these are the most important things. Well, again, uh, just as mentioned, the gap between the bachelor degree and the where you are now is not important. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for that comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Alessandro, do you have anything to add? Well, the same uh, thing for Matthew. We don't okay. care about uh, the gap between okay. degrees. Okay, thank you very much. So um, there is a question about the preparatory year uh, in Russian. Uh, I mean, like a lot of um, participants are asking about that. So like, uh, could you share more details about how it works? So if they apply for the program, which is available in uh, Russian language only, uh, so mm -hmm. how do they start? And um, uh, the participants also ask like, when can they start? Uh, should they start in September or like uh, are there any other options of being admitted to the uh, mm -hmm. preparatory year in Russian language? Mm. Okay, well, Alexander seemed to, oh no, he's back. I thought he disappeared. Okay. Well, I may start and speak for HEC first. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you become a winner of the Olympiad, what you will have to do is to 
uh, register on HEC website. So you will have your personal account. And in that account, once you enter it, you will submit your diploma and you will send a message to the moderator. This option is available right to, to do right from your personal account saying that here is my diploma. Here is the program that I would like to apply for. It is in Russian. I don't speak any Russian. Please provide me with a prep year course. Okay, that's basically how it works. Then we receive this information and we uh, there is an admission committee that together with the representatives from the uh, study office of the educational program consider this application and then approve it uh, for a full package of scholarship, meaning that it will include prep year and degree program together. Okay, so we, you will start as a prep year student for one year and then automatically you will be transferred to a degree program. So altogether, for example, if you apply for a graduate program, altogether it will be a three year of studying in Russia. And speaking of the start dates uh, for the prep year, as far as, as I remember, they start in October. It's a separate subdivision. I mean, we cooperate a lot, but it's not really us, but as just as mentioned, as far as I know, they start in October. I mean, the classes start in October, but you apply earlier. As I mentioned earlier in my presentation, if you want to apply for a full scholarship at HAC, I can't speak for other universities. I don't know their regulations, okay? I can only speak for HAC. So if you want to have obtain a full scholarship at HAC, you should apply before April 1st. Just keep it in mind. So you will apply both for a prep year and a degree program in case you are a non-Russian speaker, but you would like to study at a Russian taught program. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, this uh, process yeah. is more or less similar in all uh, Russian universities, so we stick okay. uh, to the same rules. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, there is a question like um, the participant studied in electrical engineering uh, and he has a master degree in electrical engineering. Um, he's asking uh, whether it's possible to apply again for the master's in nuclear power engineering. So would it be any like contradiction in in with the previous area of the master's studies? I, I think not. I think not. It's it's fine. We have a lot of students who applied from different fields, previous fields to nuclear physics. But the technical uh, background is a uh, is a uh, an advantage when you are applying. Definitely, it should be a technical background. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of students also participants yet. <laughs> They ask about the opportunities to work in Russia during their studies. I know that it's allowed for the international students to work, and uh, this opportunity was open to the international students. Um, the question is, like, uh, are there any uh, successful stories of the international students who work in Russia, and uh, whether the university has any additional provide any additional support to the students when they are looking for the employment uh, during their studies? Mm -hmm. Well, I can speak for my for for HAC. Uh, I slightly mentioned that uh, uh, during the presentation that we have a special service for HAC students provided by Student Support Office. Well, it's actually the full name is Student Support and Center, uh, something of that kind. Sorry, I don't remember the name. Uh, so they do provide these services uh, when they help you to find jobs in Russia. It's not guaranteed, of course, obviously, also because many of you won't speak Russian, uh, but still the possibility is there. They organize job fairs, they announce um, the vacancies that they know about, and so, uh, yeah, uh, regarding the successful stories, to be perfectly honest, 
honest, I don't know for now. I think I probably had to invite my one of my colleagues from the student support office so they could tell you about some of the success stories. I'm sure they are there. Just this, the reason why I don't mention it is just because it's a little bit a different thing. It's not something what I personally deal with. I deal with the applicants and help them to get admission to the university. And to be perfectly honest, I know very little about their further course and further life in Russia. But I'm sure there are success stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Alexander, yeah. Yeah, in MEFE, we actually have an opportunity for international students to be hired by the university, but it depends uh, strongly on the scientific uh, group where you work. Uh, for example, if you work for one year and your advisor uh, thinks that you deserve to be hired and wants you to, for example, stay uh, for PhD in future, uh, one can, uh, the university can hire you like a part-time job for some uh, salary. Yes, we have these opportunities, but it, it depends on the uh, advice, mostly on the advice, scientific advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a question on how many years uh, does the master's program take? So two years. Like, uh, two years. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the standard duration of yeah, the program to one. study. Okay. Um, okay. There is also a question like, do do you uh, offer any online programs, or should the students um, be in Russia? Uh, if they would like to apply for the scholarship. Uh, well, again, I, I mean, if, if they yes. if they want to use if they want to use the scholarship, I mean, yeah. So uh, yeah. if they get this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have online programs. Uh, as far as I remember, we have seventeen. Uh, graduates uh, online programs at HEC. They are part of this online campus that I mentioned in my presentation, but uh, they are all paid programs. So they are not partaking in this Olympic thing. And I guess everyone who is participant of this webinar naturally want to have a scholarship. So I suggest that you don't consider those online programs and look for an offline, I mean, traditional mm -hmm. programs. Okay. okay. And uh, we are uh, a technical university and have a lot of uh, experimental practical work uh, exactly. on the curriculum. So we have can offer only uh, offline uh, programs, no online. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, there is a question about the, like whether the scholarship is available for bachelor programs as well. Like as for open doors uh, scholarship, it's only available for studies at the master's and PhD level. But I believe that if you would like to apply for the bachelor bachelor's level, the universities uh, have their own uh, opportunities uh, for the students to apply. And uh, you can uh, contact the university's representatives to uh, get this information. Yeah, correct. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so another question is... Uh, Okay, I this this question is addressed. Uh, uh, oh, okay, so it's actually addressed to the high schools, uh, high school of economics. But I believe uh, we will answer a lot of concern. Like we will address a lot of concerns <laughs> of the participants. Mm -hmm. uh, they asked that uh, uh, the participant chose the specific program and HSE. So um, one second, it is uh, in education and, and psychology. And uh, they, uh, it is not listed on the Olympiad website, so probably like uh, probably it's not like available for the Olympiad winners, I assume. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyways, if we do not go exactly in that program, um, just uh, 
I would like to clarify the issue and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. So mm -hmm. there are some programs which are available for direct admission. There are some mm -hmm. programs which are available for the Open Doors uh, scholarship winners. And mm -hmm. uh, like what would be the best, uh, like uh, we are going to post the list of the programs available for the Olympiad winners and prize winners. But if mm -hmm. they for example, at the end of the Olympiad, if they understand mm -hmm. that they would like to go to the um, MIFI or HSC, yeah. So and mm -hmm. uh, the, but but the program was not listed for the Open Doors winners and prize winners. Uh, is mm -hmm. uh, would it be possible for them to apply directly to the university? Uh well, yes, they can apply directly. I mean, participating in this Olympiad is just one of the ways to get scholarship at HEC. You can also, just as mentioned, apply directly. Just as keep in mind that, well, generally speaking, admission is open from yesterday, actually, starting from November the 1st until 18th of August. Okay, so it's a long cycle. However, scholarships are available only until April the 1st. So if you took part, take part in the Olympiad and for some reason, for example, either you don't manage to become a prize winner or you realize that there is some programs that in attention you are particularly interested at, but it was not uh, presented under the subject areas of Olympiad, but you want to apply for it, you can always apply directly and you will still have time. I don't remember the dates of the Olympiad, but as far as I remember, by the end of February, you are already done with all the selection process, right? Okay, so if for some reason by the end of uh, the uh, by the end of February, re you realize that you still want to take another opportunity and apply directly to HEC, you can always do that. Okay. Before April okay. the 1st, if we talk of scholarships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So, Alexander, um, can you address the question of the participants? Like, if they would like to apply directly to the university, uh, like, uh, should they contact the, like, representatives of the university directly? So, when, when this option will become available for them? Of course, you can con contact a representative by emailing uh, to the address which I uh, wrote in my presentation. Okay. Okay. Regarding the presentations, like, would it be possible for you to upload the presentations in the in the chat section for the participants uh, to sure. familiarize? Sure. Sure. So we'll sure. do so. Okay. Thank I you very actually... much. So... <laughs> I will be happy to also upload a video, a short video that we prepared for the uh, participants of today's webinars. Um, this is like we asked two of Open Doors winners who started education at HEC this fall intake to record a video with uh, their impressions about HEC. It's very nice. So I will upload it as well. Okay, thank you very much. So we will uh, wait when it's uploaded and will be available in the chat section for the participants to download that. Um, I am um, looking through, going through the questions. Um, okay, we still, I answered a lot of those questions already today, but uh, again, uh, for the participants to uh, to know, the submission uh, option uh, is becoming available in the next few days. So if you completed the portfolio and uh, you, you have concerns that, that you cannot submit your portfolio, it will become available shortly, so no worries about that and um in case if you forget to do that uh, all portfolios will be submitted automatically and the, the status the, the, of the portfolios would be changed for submitted uh, status uh, on december 10 as i explained uh, earlier and uh, it was also included in the presentation okay so um the next question is um so we answered that. 
Uh, can uh, an electrical engineer get admission in master's degree in marketing? <laughs> so yeah, the, <laughs> there are a lot of. This is probably uh, a question to questions. ATC, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, again, the the two things like the gap between your bachelor and prospective master degree and your academic background is not important when applying to HAC. Uh, it's a different thing with MIFI, of course. If you don't have a technical background, you can't apply for the most of the education programs. I can understand that. But in case with HEC, in most of the cases, your academic previous academic background is not important, or let's say not so important. It's not obligatory, okay? okay? Just as I mentioned before, when you apply, uh, the the admission committee will consider your well your enthusiasm let's put it this way because uh, you will write uh, if it's needed you will submit a um, motivation letter your recommendation letters uh, obviously the diploma of open doors uh, the fact that you have a bachelor degree you will have to submit your diploma because you can't apply for a master's degree without bachelor's degree this is a very important thing this is i would say this is the obligatory number one requirement that you need to have a bachelor degree if you don't have it you can't apply even if you become for some reason an open doors winner but don't have a bachelor degree then you cannot apply for a master's degree the rest is optional Okay, so answering the question, yes, if you have a technical academic background, you still can perfectly apply for marketing. Okay, thank you very much for your comment. Um, and, and, and there is no limit. I mean, if the, uh, if, uh, the participants already had the master's degree in their home country, they can apply for the master degree program in Russia as well. So they can, no they answer. can. The only important more, uh, detail is if some of you guys already have master degrees that you uh, obtained under, for example, in Russia, under the state government scholarship, you cannot apply for a scholarship again, okay? So if you already have a master degree that you obtained in your home country, I assume that, well, I of course it is either paid or even if it was not paid, but it was uh, um, covered by the local government, not Russian government. The thing is that in Russia, you cannot apply for scholarship twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Um... There are still questions about uh, the language test exams. No, it's not required to participate in the Olympiad, but you will. Be, you you have to understand that you will take the trials in uh, in in Russian or English, and you will have to study in in mm -hmm. Russian or English language. I mean, uh, you will be able to be prepared uh, for studies in Russian, but not mm -hmm. for studies in English. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so actually, I believe that we covered uh, most of the main questions uh, the participants asked. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, like, if there are still questions, uh, uh, like, uh, remained uncovered, uh, you can contact the representatives of the universities directly. Uh, we will uh, do our best to upload uh, the uh, the recording of the webinar within the following week to our YouTube channel, so stay tuned. And uh, if you miss something, you will be able to get the information you are interested in. So I would like to thank uh, the representatives of uh, the High School of Economics University and the University of Mifi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna, uh, for uh, inviting next... us. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you. You're, you're very welcome always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next, uh, yeah, next Thursday we are going to have the webinar with the representatives of Samara University and People's Friendship University of Russia. So those of the participants who are interested in, you're very welcome, and you will get the uh, invitation uh, link uh, by e email from us as usual. So thank you very much again and have a wonderful okay. day and uh, yeah we wish Bye all the everyone. participants yeah we wish all See the participants good luck yeah yeah See you. Bye -bye. Yes, thank you yeah bye-bye everyone